Hey, Mike, let's get his teeth checked. He's dropping too much grain here. Sure thing, Mr. Whiteley. Dan? Morning, Mr. Whiteley. Big day today. What's today? Yearlings coming down from Claiborne. Oh. <laughs> Is that today? <laughs> you got your eye on something special? Got my eye on you. Now quit talking and get these horses fed. Horse racing is a lot of things. A sport, a business, a spectacle. The track's a place for hopeful beginning, triumph, sometimes heartbreak. And always at the center of it all are the horses. Chico, Jeff, sort these bay horses out, would you? Good thing, Mr. Whiteley. Damn, that's some big baby. It's a reviewer filly out of shenanigans. <laughs> now she's a queen. Well, don't forget, Manowar's half-brother pulled a milk cart. I bet she got a lot of muscle under that baby fat. Ain't muscle yet. She's got some class. Never know till they run. Ruffian. She was built like a watch. A study in balance. A big, tall, full-bodied filly with a neck and head so refined, like a drawing by da Vinci. Five months later, Frank Whiteley took his filly north to Belmont. All right, give her three-eighths. Keep her under wraps. We want a slow three-eighths, all right? All right. Don't push her. OK. It was a new world for the young horse. New sounds, new sights, especially that great mile and a half oval of a track. you think you were going, Jacinto? 37. 37. How about 34 and change? You call that slow? I told you to go slow. There's no way. I would have felt 34 it. and change. You better fix that clock, because there's no way. I'm going to fix your clock. <laughs> What'd you say? I heard that. She's some kind of racehorse. You know, she ain't raced nobody yet. Race or not, I love that horse. You never fall in love with one. Gas prices may be falling. Okay, give me a year. Oh. Uh, come on, give me the year and I'll give you the winner. Let's go. 1876. 1876. Hmm, take me back. Let's see. Would that be vagrant? Wait, what is this game? No, don't encourage him, please. Give me the year, any year from the beginning of time, and I will tell you who won the Kentucky Derby. 1955. That was the year my boyhood hero Swaps won the race. Would you mind not cluttering my bar with your stuff? Uh, this stuff to which you so delicately refer happens to be my book, sir, and it is dedicated to the greatest horse ever to set four hooves on a racetrack, Secretariat. Well, I got a race to cover. You don't seem so excited about that. I've seen the greatest, okay? Wrote a book about him. So we've heard. What do I owe you? Five bucks. I don't suppose you'd accept a book as payment? It was the start of another racing season, a time of high expectations. 
I would swing past Frank Whiteley's barn because he always had a live wire or two in his shed. Hey, Puerto Rican. Yes, sir. You got your boots on tight? Yes, sir. Hey, Squeaky. Hey, it's that famous reporter. Oh, it must be Tuesday. How's the old man? Good mood or bad mood today? <laughs> now, look, all she's going to want to do is flat out run. Mm -hmm. So let her have the lead and take a snug hold on her and no stick. Snug hold. All right, Mr. White. Senta. ¿Qué pasa? Este volviendo me loco. Morning, Frank. It's Mr. Whiteley, and the Puerto Rican understands English. <laughs> That's commendable, seeing as how this particular Puerto Rican hails from Panama. <laughs> Bill, I told him a million times, but you think he believes it? Panama's a ditch, isn't it? What do you got for me today, Frank? Goose eggs. I was over at Barn 10. Guys over there like a filly in the third hole by the name of Suzest. Is that right? Maybe you ought to hang around barn 10, because all we got here is a bunch of cheap crows. Right, boys? Right. Yes, sir. Jacinto? Yeah, just a bunch of cheap crows. Well, thanks for all the information. Good luck to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Belmont Park. The track is fast, the turf course is firm. are getting bigger crowds for batting practice. Well, it's hard for a real racetrack to compete with the beauty of your off-track betting ball. Mm -hmm. So who do you like? Suzest. She's a cinch. Suzest, huh? Sure about that? Holy crap, who the hell is she? <laughs> that is one of Frank's cheap crows. Well, where's he been hiding, huh? The old fox of Laurel strikes again. That, my friend, is... Ruffian. Ruffian. She doesn't seem bothered by the crowd. No, so far, so good. You tell Jacinto anything? Don't fall off. What do you think? Well, I think we're about to find out whether she's more than just a morning glory. The horses have reached the starting gate. The Phillies are at the post, 10 of them ready to go five and a half furlongs here on the main track at Belmont Park. All of them maidens. None of them have won a race so far. Let's see who emerges as a winner this afternoon. They're all in line, and the plank is up. And they're off. From the extreme outside, there goes Ruffian, charging us to take command early and quickly.
see the first time starter from the Locust Hill Farm. Like we might have a good one. That equals the track record for Belmont Park's five and a half furlong by a Philly Oracle. What a performance! First time starter ruffian to the winner's circle. Congratulations, Frank. Never even broke a sweat. Have that a girl. Good job, Jesse. Thank you. Looks like you've got yourself a racehorse, Aunt Barbara. Well, that's my girl. Good work, Frank. See, that's the kind of performance that'll bring people back to the track. This is Janie, Mr. Chairman. This way, please. Thank you. Hey, Puerto Rican. I tried to hold her back. Don't lie to me. We won by 15 lengths. That's a track record. I told you, no stick. I don't care about track records. I want the win. I want her sound to come back and win again. Now, if you pull that again on me, I'm gonna have to find another rider. You understand? I hear you. You also kneel in the What'd you say? A prayer. You're gonna need it. What'd you say, Frank? <laughs> Got any other cheap crows like that one out in the barn? I yeah, sure hope not. Scared the hell out of me if I did. I appreciate all you boys coming out here today. In case you're wondering, there's two reasons that my filly here is called hot and nasty. First one is, is she is hot. <laughs> she smoked the favorite in her last race by two and a half lengths. And she is downright nasty. <laughs> My filly's got a perfect record, three and zip. So does Ruffian. Well, now, Ruffian's a decent horse, I'll give you that, but uh, hot and nasty come here to win the sorority stakes. Were you happy with her workout this morning? Oh, listen. If she was doing any better, I couldn't stand it and the law wouldn't allow it. I'd have to slap my grandma. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're pretty confident. Hey, you bet I am. In fact, I'll show you how confident I am. Hey, Roscoe and Jack, bring that over here. Hey, all right. All right. All right. I'm gonna invite all y'all back here after the race for a victory toast. I went out and bought up all this high dollar bubbly right. here. Cause I know how you news hounds like to souse it up. <laughs> Come on back after the race. We'll do it upright. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Ruffian on the inside by a hit. Hot and nasty is second. Head and head. Ride and ride. It's a two horse race as the field turns for all. Come on, hang in there. It's Ruffian and Hot and Nasty. They're head and head inside the end ball. Ruffian on the inside. Hot and Nasty on the outside. It's trying to get fire. Come on, show what you got. Ruffian, Hot and Nasty. I mean, the Philly just set a new stakes record. She almost got beat. It's life or death at the end. Hole. All right, walk her to me.
No way. Something's wrong with her. I'm worried because she didn't run her race out there today. Never switch her leads. Never. She's popped a little cold splint. She'll be fine. I'll give her some time off. And if she gets to Saratoga, she'll be 100%. Mr. Whiteley, Mr. Lasseter says we're the ones that should have this. Well, you tell Mr. Lasseter thank you very much. We sure appreciate it. You gonna pop a cork? I ain't much of a drinker. You help yourself. Wait. I'm not sure I deserve it. I've had my doubts about her mid-stretch. Yeah, well, you're in the opinion business, not me. Hey. Seems a little off today. <laughs> Is that right? Heck of a fast time. <clears throat> Ever spend any time away from your horses? No need to. Good company. Don't believe it or not, I used to be a groom. Is that right? Growing up in Chicago, all the other kids worshipped Ernie Banks. My hero was Swaps. Yeah, for California horse, he's all right. <laughs> Never forget the day he lost to Nashua. <laughs> I was heartbroken. Swaps didn't lose to Nashua, he lost to R. Carroll. Shoemaker got out Fox that day. No damn match race ever proved a thing. Oh, that's what people want to see, right? Two horses going at it one-on-one. -on -one. The only way to win is fly out of the gate and flat out sprint for a mile and a quarter. All speed, no pace. How do you get a horse happy like that? Fuss with him. Rub on him a little. You gonna let her fuss with the Colts? <laughs> She's a perfect four now. Four races, four records. <laughs> Running with the Phillies doesn't seem like much of a challenge to her anymore. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a little deal. You stick to the writing part of it and I'll do the horse training, okay? Fair enough? Fair enough. <laughs> Just one last thing. Is there a horse out there that can run with her? As it turned out, there was another challenger out there. Another horse with a perfect record. Not a filly, a colt. His name was Foolish Pleasure. He looked like an outside linebacker, quick and athletic, with muscles in his eyebrows. He was shaping up as the best two-year-old colt in the country. Besides being undefeated, he had something else in common with Ruffian. He had the same jockey. Frank felt it was too early for Ruffian to take on the colt. His plan was to establish her as the best filly in the country. A good place to do that was Saratoga, a bright stage where people came to spot future contenders for the Triple Crown. Ruffian, at 4-0, and oh, was beginning to attract her own fans, especially among the ladies. Hey, Puerto Rican. You know, if you weren't such a fool, you'd be wearing our colors today. Yeah, but I appealed the suspension for the rough Save ride. Save your breath, Puerto Rican. Hey, come on. Some joke boxes me in. What am I, I supposed to do? I don't need your damn excuses. What this filly wants is to have the same rider on her back every time she goes. Now, if you can't ride safe and stay out of trouble, you're not going to get on her back. You understand? All right. The Vicente, three things. Don't get her hurt, don't use the stick, and don't get her beat. Yes, sir. Dios mío, este. <laughs> hey, amigo. Did you ever stall the muck out by easy? <laughs> you should have put me on your filly. I put you on Damascus six years ago. It was a mistake of my life. That horse was sore. Ah, oh, Bo, you stiffed him so your regular mount could get horse of the year. Dr. Fager was a better horse, and you know it. You held my horse, Baeza. Get out of here. You don't scare me, her neither. Today she gets beat. Adios.
for a race. for the six furlong spin away here at Saratoga. A field of four, the favorite, one to five, Ruffian looking for her fifth straight victory, and she is undefeated. Vince Percelli Jr. rides this afternoon. The second choice is Lamping Bridge, three to one with Braulio Baeza. You see, people love her. Yeah, okay, okay, let's see how she runs. All in line, ready for the start. And they're off in the spin away. Good great, Vince. Ruffian quickly takes command. Scottish Melody into the second spot, and Laughing Bridge is now racing third. They move to the top of the stretch. Wait. And it's Ruffian now Wait. in command by two, by three lengths. Go, go, go! I get Vince. They move past the half mile pole, heading to the far turn. Why you gotta say no, huh? I'm speechless. Of course you are. He didn't even step on the gas. Nobody even knows how much that Philip can run. Faster than any two-year-old has ever run six furlongs on this track. Philly Allcolt, including Secretariat, she beat them all. She's in a class all by herself. She's up there with the great ones. What are the odds, Mr. Whiteley? 26,000 foals registered every year, and here God sends us this one. Well, even a blind hog can find an acorn now and then, huh, Dan? <laughs> they called him the Fox of Laurel. Here, you take her. That for his ability to keep one eye on his horse, and the other eye on the competition. Down the stretch they come in the hopeful, and it is foolish pleasure taking command. Foolish pleasure. The tough, undefeated Colt had his own race. Colt's own. Here's the winner. Foolish pleasure wins the hopeful by almost four lengths and remains undefeated. I told you we should have bet. Six for six. <laughs> Who's counting? Yeah. Well, how do you think that compares against Ruffian's win yesterday? <laughs> Fellas, the only way to compare the two is to let them run together. It's like my daddy said, we can only beat the horses that are willing to run against us. Maybe you ought to be asking Frank Whiteley when that girl he has to be ready to go. He don't want no part of this call. <laughs> Frank? Well, so what do you think? Well, Colt can run a little bit. People are saying that your filly is the best two-year-old in the country. Is that what people are saying? There's going to be plenty of colts at the Champagne Stakes at Belmont, including Foolish Pleasure. Well, don't get all worked up. October's still a ways off yet. Come on, give me something, will you? Anything, an inkling. I got to have something to write about. You know, I thought you guys made all this stuff up. All right, look. 
We'll go against Phillies again in the freezette. Okay. Sharpen her up. Right. She comes out of that okay. Maybe we'll go in the champagne. Maybe. That's not much to write about. Make it up. The morning of the frisette, there was a hush of anticipation along the shed row. Could Ruffian continue her string of record-setting runs? Mr. Whitening. Never seen her leave this much before. Well, let's get her temperature. Hey, Mike, grab a shank and walk her out, would you? Yes, sir. You see that funny step? All right, turn. Here, stand. <laughs> well, let's call a vet and get a set of pictures on her. What's the problem, Frank? Well, sir, I don't know why she's spiking a fever, but she is. Frank, there are 25,000 people out there for the Frisette Stakes today. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to scratch her. Nobody knows the horse better than Frank. If he says she's a scratch, she's out. Then she's out of the Frisette. Yes, sir. But she will be ready for the Champagne Stakes October 5th. Well, that's entirely up to her. Um, but Frank, the Champagne is a rare opportunity for us to feature ruffian and foolish pleasure in the same field. Horse racing needs this race. We really need to bring people back to the tracks again. Yes, sir. I need to take care of my horse. Sorry, fellas. So you see this cloudy area here and here. It's a hairline fracture. She's going to need a cast. <laughs> Doing good. Here we go. A little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> oh. Come on now. Okay, you're all right. Easy, Come on now. Easy, easy. That's right. We're almost done here. Shh, 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 shh. I don't know, Doc. You better tear that whole foot up. You don't give up easy, do you, girl? Okay, we'll go with the soft one. You kick me, I'll kick back. How is she, Doc? She's got a hairline fracture on her right hind leg. When will she be able to race again? Mm, it'll be months. You know what happens? Here you've got this half-ton animal galloping at 36 miles an hour. And for one split second, you've got that foreleg out front, all that weight, all that force gets thrown down into that one small hoof. 12,000 pounds of pressure on that thin lower leg. Keep an eye on her, Dan. You bet. Don't you have a home? Season's over. Boy, I sure was looking forward to seeing her race against Foolish Pleasure. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but she's done for the year. I'm gonna take her back down to Canada and let her grow into a three-year-old. Let her be a horse for a while. With Ruffian now idle on the sidelines, the historic champagne stakes fell to the swift mercy of Foolish Pleasure. Jacinto Vasquez in front by six links. It is Foolish Pleasure taking the champagne. My Cole, Foolish Pleasure, is now unbeaten in seven starts. Now that's at six different racetracks, six different distances. But what else has he got to prove? I could take it from here, Mr. White. No, I got it. You going home. You sure? There's no one else here. There's just 26 head of horses. You want me to mix the medicine for you? No, go on. Get out of here. 
All right. Merry Christmas, Mr. White. Yep. Can't turn you out. Just run yourself silly and get hurt again. You probably don't even know you're hurting, do you? <laughs> Maybe a year or two from now. You make them colts cry, Uncle. Strong. It's because it's Christmas. Listen, Missy, turn you loose. You're a little crazy, you make me look bad now, are you? Huh? All right. There was a sense of electricity in the air that spring morning. She came back to Belmont groomed and glistening in a black fur coat. Bigger than she was last season. Wider, taller, fuller. Looking like a princess who had grown into a queen. 33 and two fists. She's flying. Welcome back, Mr. Whiteley. Uh, I knew my day was going too good. Looks like your filly's back, too. Got any race picked out yet? A couple weeks. Nice to see you, too. Return to the racing wars, Ruffian by almost five lengths. It's Ruffian and she's back. Mr. Wiley, it's too early in her comeback for Ruffian to run the Derby, but is there any chance she'll run the Preakness? Nope. You're from Maryland, aren't you, Frank? Wouldn't it be nice to get back to your old stomping grounds? Yeah, the Preakness turned into a big circus. Her dates are the Acorn, the Mother Goose, and the Oaks. Early Triple Crown. That's right. So she's running strictly with the girls. She does like boys, doesn't she, Frank? She likes everybody except for porters. <laughs> what are you smart about, you Cinto? I get to ride the best filly and the best colt, and now I don't even have to choose. As usual, in the spring, the pace of thoroughbred racing began to quicken. A month later, Foolish Pleasure came from behind to win the Kentucky Derby. And down the stretch they come in the first jewel of the Philly Triple Crown. The following week, Ruffian trounced the field of Phillies in the acorn. Ruffian in another stage record performance. Yeah! But then, Foolish Pleasure fell short at the Preakness. While Ruffian just kept rolling, winning the second leg of the Philly Triple Crown, and once again setting a new stakes record. Mr. Lauren, as the man who trained Secretariat, I wonder if you could share with us your thoughts about Ruffian. 
Scott is my witness. She may be even better than a secretary. A week later, Foolish Pleasure gave it all he had, but lost by a head in the Belmont. Frank Whiteley had the only undefeated three-year-old at this point. He planned to win the third and final leg of the Philly Triple Crown and then beat the Heat in July. This name, that fact, and also check on uh, uh, I gotta call you back. What are you doing here? It's the place of business. You heard the room. What room? Race of Champions. Race of Champions? Yeah, the big boys at the NYRA, they're trying to do something to spike attendance. Yeah, so? Three different horses, each one a leg of the Triple Crown this year, right? Yeah. First time in five years. Right. You're gonna put all three of them into one starting gate, see which one's the best of the bunch. What about Ruffian? The boys forgot to invite her to their little stag party. Hey, Dick, get a load of this. Race of champions? That's either a bad joke or false advertising. Uh-uh. Truth is, no three-year-old Colt this year can call himself a champion unless he tests himself against the unequaled Philly Ruffian. Need a kicker. Give me a kicker. Gentlemen. Ah, gentlemen, thank you. Gentlemen, you cannot steal the crown of a champion. You must earn it. Very nice. You cannot steal the crown of a champion. You must earn it. Oh, boy, that is good writing. <laughs> you got the girls buzzing with that. <laughs> Can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> Frank like it? <laughs> I think you'll have to ask him about that. Uh, I'm sure he did. Field of four horses, three colts, and Ruffian. The column got it right. You got it right? Avatar's already on an airplane back to California. He's not turning back. And there's no way in hell Leroy Jolly's gonna run his colt against another stalker like Master Derby and my speed horse. Now you watch, they'll find a way to get Master Derby to drop out too, and then where's your four horse field, huh? How many horses we got left? Two. Yeah, what kind of race is that? A match race, boy versus girl, ruffian versus foolish pleasure. The two best three-year-olds in the country, a fight to the finish. I thought the racing association made a commitment to run those three colts. Avatar dropped out. What about the Preakness winner, Master Derby? The owners have been compensated. $50,000 to withdraw. Fifty grand not to race? What sort of nonsense? You know, it makes perfect sense, Aunt Barbara. It clears the way for the race the world wants to see. I don't know. Did you speak to Frank? Ruffian belongs to you. But she also belongs to the public. After all, it's the race fans that make that $400,000 purse possible. See, but you can't put a price on this. 55,000 fans here at Belmont. 20 million more watching on television. The largest purse ever, more people viewing than ever before. This one event could revive the sport. Danny, you're up early. Ah, couldn't sleep. Beautiful horse. She's about as close to perfect as I've ever seen. You ready to win the Oaks? You bet. And after that, Frank, you and I both know that at some point she's gonna have to run against the boys. You know, I'm thinking the Travers up in Saratoga mid-August. It's a long way off. Well, good horses always need some time. Right? You asked for more time the end of last season, and I gave it to you. You know I trust you with this horse. It's just that the pressure to have this match race is just it's overwhelming. I don't see how we can get out of it. We've got our backs against the wall, and the newspapers won't let go of it. The truth of the matter is, the sport is hurting. Barbara and I can do something to help. 
really help right now, I, I, I don't see how I can let a few months stand in the way. Mr. Janney, all I really know is horses. I mean, I don't know about the business end of this game, but I just don't think a match race is the right thing for her. Are you saying she'll lose? No, but that colt's going to be breathing on her every step of the way. They're going to have to sprint a solid mile and a quarter. You know, I understand you're under a lot of pressure, sir, but I just prefer you didn't pass that on to Philly. I mean, she's a great racehorse. Maybe one of the best ever. If we don't push her, she just might have a chance to prove it. With all due respect, you didn't answer my question. Can she win this race? Yes, sir, she sure can. Will you train her so she can win it? No, I'm not going to walk away from her now, am I? You come too far, huh? Thank you, Frank. We are pleased to announce that a match race has been set for July 6th between Foolish Pleasure, this year's Kentucky Derby winner, and Stuart Janney's fine filly ruffian, the best filly of this era, possibly of all time. CBS will broadcast the event live from Belmont Park for all of America to see. The purse will be the richest in American thoroughbred racing history, $400,000, with $225,000 going to the winner. Question, Mr. Knack is our most vocal advocate for this event. <laughs> Ask away. Question for Mr. Whiteley. Will Jacinto Vasquez be riding your filly or Mr. Jolly's Colt? You're going to have to ask him. Let's bring up the t-shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some gifts for you to kick off this historic event. You'll just have to decide if you're rooting for her or for him. <laughs> Look at this. He's trying to make a bra burner out of this village. Yeah. Hey, it sells tickets. It sells newspapers, too. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mac? Well. Let the battle of the sexes begin. Hey, fellas. You're going to have to make up your mind, you Sinto, one way or the other. What do you think? Are you telling me what to do? It's your choice, you Sinto. I just want you to have all the facts before you make a decision. Now, if you do go with foolish pleasure, of course, you're not going to be able to ride my filly anymore. You know that, don't you? I mean, that's a whole lot of person money left on the table, isn't it? Well, Mr. Jolly said I can write for him no matter who I choose. <laughs> He's a generous man. I'm not. Now, what's it going to be, Puerto Rican? <laughs> oh, man. Why you got to buzz my chops all the time? You make it so hard to like you, I'll tell you that. I don't want you to like me. If you start liking me, you'd be riding her for the wrong reasons. The only reason to get on her back is because you think she's a better horse. So what's it going to be? Hmm. Hey, which horse you can ride for the match race? Stay away from my jockey, Nick. It's Ruffian in front by a length and three quarter. Down the stretch they come. Ruffian. Come on, baby, go! go. Yes. It's Ruffian. And Ruffian sweeps the Philly Triple Crown. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get yours? You got the wrong name on that pin. Yeah, 
She set a stakes record and Jacinta was holding her under wraps. <laughs> what, what do you think of that? She's gonna be very tough. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Did you choose your jacket? yet? Baeza. Baeza? Adding a little fuel to the fire. After two shots at Ruffian, nobody wants to beat her more than Baeza. No one wants to beat Frank Whiteley more than Baeza, right? <laughs> well, the jock don't like him, that's for sure. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Sore at Yacinto for going with the filly? No. He chose Ruffin because he thinks she's the best. I think Foolish Pleasure's the best. And that, my friend, is what makes horse races. Sure. To the winner and still undefeated champion, Ruffian. Well, to our network sponsors. Ah, thank you. When uh, Billie Jean King beat Bobby Riggs just two summers ago, their tennis match drew 30,000 fans. We're expecting 55,000 for the great match race. But no matter who wins on July 6th, we will all be winners because we'll have drawn millions of viewers and millions of new fans to the great sport of horse racing. You're here. Mr. Jenny, you want to see me? Frank, I just want you to know that when all this is over, we're going to go back to your schedule. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Now, Denny and the fellows from CBS want to have a few words with you. The last minute details that I shot. Cameras and whatnot. Okay? Yep. Good. Now, a mile and a quarter race has it starting at this colored post down here on what we call the clubhouse turn. You can't start a match race on the turn. Our audience will want to no, see No, they're the going to break the out of the gate wide open, go into a turn? We need a shot of the start of the race. I don't care about your cameras. I care about my filly. It's got to start in the shoot. You might as well start in New Jersey. No, Frank, if we do that, the crowd won't know what's going on for the first quarter mile. <laughs> well, how about we move the crowd? We'll get a much better shot if we start at the clubhouse turn. This is a horse race. It's not a picture show. Is that the best we can do? I understand. What do you think? Well, I've already told you what I think, Mr. Jenny. He asked me, can we win this? And I think she can, but you want to start her on the turn, you're just going to have to find yourself a different trainer. The New York Racing Association and Belmont Park must always place the safety of our racehorses first. Therefore, we've come to the conclusion we have no choice but to begin this Great match race, running a mile and a quarter between Ruffian and Foolish Pleasure on our historic shoot. We've all been waiting a very long time for this, gentlemen, and we look forward to seeing you there on match race day. All I'm asking is one good workout, okay? You know the horse. You won the derby. Huh? Come on, just uh, bring him up to speed. He's not doing what he needs to be doing, okay? You owe me this much. I'll think about it. Think think about it. Let me know. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. What's on old Leroy's mind? Oh, nothing. He just want to know if maybe I can work for his pleasure tomorrow morning. What? He didn't sharpen his colt to beat my filly? Are you kidding? I never said I'll do it. Well, you better not. He's just messing with your mind, Puerto Rico. He knows he ain't got the horse. He knows there's no way in hell I'd let you anywhere near foolish pleasure between now and Sunday. He's just trying to build a fire under Baeza's ass. It's like this race is already being run, huh? <laughs> You're not having second thoughts, are you? and change. So what do you think about all this women's live jazz surrounding the race? Well, at this point in era, there's no way a Philly's going to beat a cold. Let's 
ruffian's going to win because she's the better horse. Who is pleasure just because he's a male? Ruffian because she's a female. I say that again. I have to agree with my wife. I like foolish pleasure because I'm a male chauvinist pig. And here comes Ruffian eating up the track. The filly is only the fourth horse to sweep the filly triple crown. And this workout today is her last before her showdown with Kentucky Derby winner, the Colt Foolish Pleasure. Mr. Wiley, one picture of the horse. Come on, just one. She's Wonder Woman for crying out loud. The people yeah. want yeah. to see her. Yeah. All right. All right. Maybe just one. Okay. Hey, Mike. Send him on down to stall nine, would you, and let him have one shot? Stall nine, sir? Yeah. You sure you want to stir her, boss? I think she can handle it, don't you? If you say so, yes, sir. Okay, just one shot, but be careful, because she bites. I got our word, one and done. Well, you heard the man. Come on. Kicks, too. Right down here. Just one now. Okay. Oh. Are we ready? Behind me is the brilliant Philly Ruffian. The hopes and dreams of girls and women everywhere will be riding Idiots. on her this Sunday as she takes on Kentucky Derby winner, Foolish Pleasure. Can a girl beat a boy? Is the female of the species better than the male? Okay. <laughs> Old Frank sure knows how to get her on the press, doesn't he? Yeah, it's hard to believe they can't tell that horse from this one. <laughs> I bet she'd love to be over there posing for all those cameras. Ain't that the truth? Look at her. Not a worry in the world. All she wants to do is run. Long time to wait for those two minutes. You nervous? Every time she goes, I'm nervous as a cat. Behind me stands the brilliant Philly Ruffian. The hopes and dreams of girls and women everywhere will be riding on her this Sunday as she takes on Kentucky Derby winner, Foolish Pleasure. We were watching that. Boy versus girl, he versus she, battle of the sexes. First of all, you know what? It's horses. Horses, not people. And, and, and we're supposed to be journalists, objective journalists. Now, come on, go back to work. What's the problem? The problem? It's, 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 it's the spectacle. You know, the, 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 the circus. It's, it's, not, it's not what I wanted. It's not what I write about. Oh, you're a great sports writer, because you love the game. And you're passionate about it. Well, that moves people. Sometimes they move in directions you don't want to go. Sorry. Good afternoon and welcome to the great match race. We're here at Belmont Park for what many have called the battle of the sexes. Today a black beauty of a filly named Ruffian, winner of all ten of her starts, will take on the powerful colt Foolish Pleasure, winner of the Kentucky Derby. Yes, it's a day to dance, a day to celebrate, for this great match race is an historic event, a classic sporting confrontation featuring a matchup as electric as that of any World Series, Super Bowl, or heavyweight title bout. But there's competition beyond the track as well. The so-called women's livers versus the male chauvinists. Versus female. Guys, are you going to win today? Yeah! I don't know if you're going to be outdone by the lady. As you can see, a whole lot more rides on today's race 
than a $2 bet. You ready? She's ready, but if Jolly thinks I'm taking her up there one second before I have to, he's got his socks on over his boots. Thanks. Coat's on his way. Well, let's go to the party. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to Belmont Park for the great match race. The horses will be on the track momentarily. Best of luck, Stuart. Barbara. Lee? I'll be damned if you can pull it off, Jimmy. <laughs> Have a good race. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the field for the great match race. <laughs> Number one is Locust Hill Farms Ruffy. A three-year-old daughter, a reviewer out of shenanigans. Trained by Frank Wesley Jr. and written by Jacinto Vasquez. Number two is John L. Greer's Foolish Pleasure. Foolish Pleasure is a son of What a Pleasure, out of Full D9. And the trainer is Lee Boy John. What do you think? Chunky this afternoon. I think she's going to win. Howdy all by Ace. Me too. The distance of the match race, a mile and a quarter. Good luck, Mr. Whiteley. The horses for the great match race will be at the starting gate in eight minutes. Uh, would you look at this turnout? It's great. You know, they're all here for your girl? Or...
see this place so packed. Yeah, it's amazing. <sighs> so did Whiteley say anything? I mean, how's the horse? Nothing left to say. Time for him to race. It is now post time for the great match race. The Colt and the Philly are ready. The flag is up. What's up? They seem very calm. All set for the start. They're off. It's foolish pleasure going to the front. Ruffian on the inside, up to challenge. One fifth seconds. to the front fire here. Oh, She's beating him. <laughs> Those two stride for stride as they race down the back stretch. Support the Philly. Apparently broken her leg. 
As foolish pleasure, the colt sails through the stretch. The match race is over. I didn't want to win like this. Give it to me. Hold her still as you can. Keep her steady. Keep her steady. I'm so sorry. Sesamoids, Frank, they shattered. They exploded right out. You scared any chance at all? Less than 10%. I'll do the best I can do. She's dropping too far down. Give her another dose. Yes, sir. Standing by. We're gonna need more four by fours. No, 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 it's too much. She's reacting. Hundreds of fans have gathered outside this small equine hospital next to Belmont Park 
waiting for news of their beloved Philly. It is nearly six hours since the tragic accident. These fans continue to keep their vigil on a very hot, very humid Long Island night. We are told that the great ruffian has been anesthetized and her condition at the moment is stable. I'm certain that the question on everyone's mind at this point is, will Ruffian survive? I held a shank, and I talked to her all the way over in that ambulance. I just talked to her and told her everything would be all right. Just kept on talking. What else could it do? Mike, pull yourself together now. There was pigeons on the track. You made a miss a step. Uh, she clipped the gate. That's what did it. Maybe it was the change in the track surface right out of the chute. Could have been. There's too many doctors in. They keep sticking needles in her. She's got the best vets in the country. It's up to them now. Is it true she was never behind in a race? No horse ever came close. She wouldn't have tolerated it. <laughs> Perfect 10 for 10. 11. She was ahead when she broke down. So the surgery was a success. Ruffian's right foreleg has been set in a special cast and she's resting comfortably. We won't have a full prognosis until she comes out of the anesthesia. Until then, we'll just have to wait. Doctor, we'll be no more than you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Easy, man. 
She's still running. So keep her down. Yep. I got it. I got it. I got keep you. Keep her down. Oh, girl. Oh, 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 oh. Keep pressure on her. Keep her down. You're going to be all right now. Just no, down, girls. Down. Keep her steady. Steady. Watch that other leg. Watch the other leg. I need more hands in here. Come on, guys. Don't let her hit the other leg. Watch the cast. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold Don't let her hit the cast. Watch. Keep her down. Oh, oh. No, 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 still, still, hold her still. She's broken her other leg. Keep her still. Keep her down, down. Yes, Frank. She's broken her other leg. Well, it's bad, sir. It's as bad as I've ever seen it. I don't want her suffering anymore. You go ahead. Put it down. Yes, sir. Put these on, would you mind? Yes, sir.
Would she have beaten the cult? We'll never know. It was a race to answer all questions, and it answered none. Well, we better be getting along. Frank, I'm really sorry. Well, that's horse racing, Mr. Knack. Just horse racing. After Ruffian, I chose to walk away. I could never cover the sport full time again. But Frank, he went back to the track the next morning. That was Frank for you. No one knows why the filly broke down that afternoon. Maybe she took a bad step. Horses will do that sometimes. But what she left in her passing was a memory far sharper. A vision of surpassing grace and beauty. Of a soaring poetry in motion that was written in hoofbeats that ring as clearly today as they did then.